Okay, I am back. My phone's a little bit more charged. We are going to go over how to make a palette sign. A um, couple different things that you can use for these piece together signs. Let me grab one real quick. Let me set you down without you falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. So lots of different sizes that you can make. Um, here is obviously the uh, thicker one, and then we have one that's made out of the thinner wood here. And this is what the backs look like of mine. Um, you can do, I'm gonna say this every single video, it's all preference, do what you feel like is best for you and your business or your personal, whatever you're using your wood signs for. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this. So a couple of things that you are going to need. <clears throat> you are going to need some wood. So I already have some wood set aside. We are going to use furring strips. I get these at Home Depot. Um, they're a little bit cheaper, um, super easy to work with. So that's what we're going to use today. And you are going to need some kind of saw, um, which you can do. Home Depot and Lowe's, they will cut your wood for you. Mine cut it for free. Um, some don't after the first two cuts, it's 25 cents per cut. So I'm going to show you guys what I use. Um, to make my signs. Um, so I just keep wood on hand, obviously. Um, I'm a little bit of a hoarder. Let's not admit that to anybody in real life, right? Um, so I use a miter saw. So this is the miter saw that I have. You guys can use a circular saw, you can use a jigsaw. This is just the easiest thing that I have found. Literally just put the wood here and then I'm gonna show you how to do that. <clears throat> you can sand it. Couple different options how you can sand your signs. You can use a palm sander, an orbital sander. Um, you can use a belt sander. So this you just turn on and this whole thing is going to move. This you just um, put in your hand and you're gonna use it this way. You are going to need um, air compressor <clears throat> um, or something to use your brad nailer. So I've got this little tiny air compressor from Harbor Freight. I don't, it was on a manager special. Someone returned it and didn't want it. I don't know, 50 bucks. And then a brad nailer or nail gun. So this thing is super cool. And that's how we're going to do that. And you also are going to need some wood glue. So let me place you in a spot where you don't fall through my table. And we are going to cut some wood. Um, very, <clears throat> this is going to be a longer video because I don't know how to pause on a live video. So we're going to do step by step. So if you're bored, just tune in and say hi. I'm not going to cut my hand off. So I might not answer you super, super quickly. So need to get my wood. So I'm going to um, put this aside. You guys need to make sure you're using all safety features on all of your stuff. If you don't know how to use your tools, make sure you figure out how to use your tools. Um, so I want my neck sign going to be um, 12 inches. So I have a measuring tape. Um, these are super cheap at Harbor Freight. I lose measuring tapes and scissors like no one's business. So I have these all over the place. Hair in a ponytail when you're using saw so you don't get caught and your head doesn't chop off. Um, we're going to use a pen and we're going to do 12 inches right there. Okay, so <clears throat> We're gonna go at it. You should probably use safety glasses or safety stuff <clears throat> In enough room so my room's a little cramped so <laughs> It's kind of hard to try to maneuver things around in here Okay, so I'm going to measure this up. I actually have a laser on my miter saw. And it's a little bit off. So what I have to do is. Hang on. All that wood's in the way. So what I have to do is I put that mark on there. And what I do is place it up here. You need it flush with the back side of this. And I get the blade. I'm not going to turn on the blade. We're going to close this. And I'm going to put that blade and look at my line and make sure it's right even. It's about an eighth of an inch off on the, on the um, laser. So this is going to be our first cut. So I'm going to do about a 12 by 12. So I need about eight cuts of this. So we're just going to go at it. So here's one cut. So I push it all the way down 
and then here's a little button here and here's a button here you gotta push them the same time and then your blade comes on bam we have our first cut we're gonna set that aside now we're gonna go back and measure it again So there's that. Come back at it. So we're about an eighth of an inch off, but I still kind of put the blade down there to make sure I have it right. All right, so push two buttons and go at it. Make sure you don't cut your fingers off. And I don't reach underneath it when I have, when I'm working on it, because you never know what's happening. So these things... It could be a disaster. Like I said, I like my hands. How would I glitter things if I didn't have my hands? So make sure you do safety. I'm not held responsible or liable. Come from this side over there. Measure it again. Now some people, once they already have the measure that they want, they kind of put two pieces of wood in here. You can do that if you want to. Sometimes I do that, but for technical purposes for this video, I'm not doing it the way I normally do. Because this is what I'm talking about. I get this and I stack this in here. And what I do is even this up with my finger at this end and see where the laser is pointed at. And then I put the blade down and I cut it from there. But we're going to go ahead and just mark it off. Um, it's a little bit easier if you're not comfortable with this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this back down here. All right, we're good. You can use however many pieces you want, however big size sign you want. And like I said, this is going to be a long process because I don't know how to pause on my videos or fast forward or anything. The furring strips is what we're using right now, and it's super cheap from Home Depot. So if you're just practicing, this is something good. Or if you can get pallets, um, you can do that. That's super cheap, too. You need to know how to break down the pallets. Sometimes people already have, like, pallets um, for sale, broken down pallets for sale in, like, the marketplace on Facebook. So you can try there. This piece is a little bit bigger, so we're going to put that there. So we have seven. We'll just go with seven. Okay, so now this is our main sign. We're going to use this for the main sign. This is what we're going to do now. Okay. We're going to place this face down. So see how um, these are here? We want, no, we want this this way. So we want the ugly sides to face us. Now, some people sand their things first. Generally, I don't. If I'm making a rustic sign, I don't sand first. Um, if I'm making like a, a more crisp, clean lines, I'm not going to make it rustic or anything like that, then I'm reading, sorry. Yeah, um, so Mary says, just a tip, instead of measuring each one separately, use a stop at 12 inch out of the blade and then just bump wood up to the stop. You can go through a bunch of cuts in no time and they will be the exact same length. Um, I do that. I'm trying to just do, uh, I do lots of different things. Um, for beginners, just kind of do whatever you, whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, so we're going to do the ugly pieces and we're going to face that up. So this is going to be our backside here, okay? We do need other pieces of wood. So I am going to get and cut two pieces of wood. So basically, you guys can't see. So we are going to get two pieces of wood, and we're going to make it about the size of this, 
but we are going to cut a little bit off. So about um, half inch from each side, okay? So we're gonna leave about a half inch gap. So we're gonna make sure that our brad nailer is gonna get every piece of wood here. So I want this to be about nine inches. So um, I am going to stack these two since we're just cutting these two. So then I'm gonna cut this just like this. I'm gonna make this super even. We're gonna come over here and cut it. Okay, so now we have the two pieces of wood that we need. So we are going to make sure that our sign is even. And if you guys saw my other tutorial on um, my wood pieces were kind of like this, all I did was literally just this. And um, that's how you got them all crooked. So you could do any kind of little design if you want. So. Um, I'm just going to make it simple for this video. We're going to make it even. And so I, you can use a level. I eyeball everything that I do. I hardly ever use a measuring tape too. <laughs> so I have my fork bench here. So basically I'm just pressing my thumb right here and making it even on the end of the wood bench. And I make sure I have the ugly pieces front because this is going to be the back side that we are using. So now I have my two pieces of wood. We are gonna place these here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some wood glue. Now, some people <clears throat> put wood glue in between here, no problem. So I'll show you how to do that too. So all you're gonna do is put a bunch of wood glue right there. So it's super easy. <clears throat> I haven't had my wood signs break apart and I don't put the wood glue here, but I'm just gonna show you guys how simple it is to do that. And if you get wood on the other wood glue on the other side, just sand it off like I just did. I can see it dripping on the other side. Now I do use the wood glue on the strips that I put on the back though. So, like I said, most of the time I don't even use I don't put the wood glue in between the signs, but you can. Um, and some people don't even put the back strips on it, so this is all preference to you. Okay, so I make sure that this is good and tight. Okay, so it's pretty even to me. If, if it's not even, then we can just sand a little bit off at the um, end. Some people sand before. Um, I don't for the more rustic signs. So what we're going to do is get some wood glue here. So wood glue, I just get um, mm -hmm. at, you can get at um, Home Depot, Lowe's, probably not Harbor Freight, even though Harbor Freight's like my BFF, Walmart. So I just do a little bit of squiggly lines here. And like I said, I don't measure things. So if you're OCD, I'm sorry. Um, you can measure from the top to the bottom. I eyeball it. So I'm going to flip this over. So glue side is going to go down. I want it about right here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the, on the top side here. Now, this is where the brad nailer comes into play. So, I hope I have enough power for this. So, it's hooked up to my air compressor. This is the brad nailer or nail gun. Um, the technical term is air brad nailer. I got this from Harbor Freight. I got the tubing from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight's awesome. It's cheaper than the other ones. So I buy like the stuff that I sort of don't want to last. Um, I did buy my belt sander there though, and it's lasted pretty well. So it's hooked up to my air compressor, and this is all you're going to do. So I make sure that it's still stuck together. So I'm going to brad nail this side, and then I'm going to come over here and do this side. So that way I know for sure this is the tightness that I want because if I go from here to here sometimes these get a little scattered over there all right and I push the glue okay so we're gonna go at it so a little trigger we're gonna do this this I can't shoot this out in the air 
it has to be pressed up against something. I don't want to accidentally do it because my luck, I'll shoot the thing through my finger if I'm practicing and showing you guys what not to do. So I like my fingers. So come through here and press this down. See how it clicks. Now press it, click the button. Shoots the nail in there. So I'm gonna push this and I'm gonna make sure that this is all the way over to this side. And I'm gonna make sure that they're all pressed down. So now I'm gonna come on this side, press it down, shoot it there, okay? So now I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing. So I'm gonna make sure we're gonna shoot this here. And I'm just using this on the other side and I'm gonna press this down and make sure that it's all even and then we're going to shoot it here. So now, <clears throat> some people put more than one nail in there. We have the wood glue on it. We even put the extra wood glue in the middle. All I'm gonna do is put a nail, brad nailer in on each thing. So we're gonna go right in the center um, of each one. So some people measure it, I don't. We're just gonna go at it. That's how you do that. So this is the brad nailer hooked up to my air compressor. Um, the air compressor was on earlier, it's super loud, so I made sure I turned it off. This is super easy to get out. Click this, open here, and this is where you're gonna have all these, um, the brad nails in here. And I probably should have told you guys to make sure you have the right length. Um, so this is the perfect length for the sign that I'm doing. Um, sometimes they're not long enough or um, they're too long. So I was making sure I didn't just brad nail this to my um, uh, workbench. So here this is. So see how the wood glue went on the other side? Super easy to get off. You just wipe it off. Um, I don't like touching glue, so I'll wipe it off later. Or you can sand it off. But actually, I'm going to show you how to sand. So I'm going to have to touch it. Nah. Okay. Gross. 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 I don't have paper towels in this room. That's in the other room. Okay. That's disgusting. Okay, so um, like I said, I don't generally put the wood glue um, in between the things. I only put the wood glue on the back side. Um, <clears throat> some people like extra security. They're like, Jessica, my wood sign's falling apart. All right, we need to make sure that we put more wood glue on it. Uh, beads, Tammy, or nails? Um... It's one and one eighths. So these come in different size boxes. So I get these from Harbor Freight. Um, I just bought all kinds of different sizes because I do all different size um, wood signs. So that would be, I just bought every size there was. So just in case, because I don't like to be in the middle of the night. So I'm like, seriously? I want one of every tool. <laughs> so do I, and I'm, I'm trying to build up my collection. Okay, so super easy to put those things back in there. You're gonna put your um, nails face down and you just put it in there, slide it all the way in there, and then close it. Bam, done. So just now tuning in that Brad Neller. Um, it's hooked up to the air compressor. It's a baby air compressor, so it doesn't last very long. Um, it did last for that sign, so that's all I needed it for. It is super loud. Um, so anyways, so now the next tool we are going to use. Some people call it an orbital sander. Some people call it a palm sander, so that's just it's probably something in between. So I already have some um, sandpaper on there. How much was the gun? The gun at Harbor Freight was um probably 20 bucks um i can't remember now my dewalt's a little bit more i think the sander is 100 bucks um so these sand pieces of sandpaper all it is it comes in little circles you can get all kinds of different grits that's your preference on what you want to do and you use this it is velcro so all you're going to do make sure your holes line up um, because it needs some air to suck some things down I probably should clean this out eventually. No, not right now. We'll do it later. So, super easy to put on. That's how you're going to do that. Now it's plugged in. 
This is a little bag that's going to suck up, um, we'll try to suck up all the sawdust. Uh, my entire house is full of sawdust, so this is on off button here, and we're just going to go at it. So now some people sand before they put it together because they like the really crisp um, lines in between. I'm worried about when you put the vinyl on because my purpose of my wood signs is I'm putting the vinyl on to the signs. I need to make sure that it sticks. So my vinyl is not going to be going in the creases. So if I go like this and I, if I get a splinter, that means I want to sand a little bit more because I want to make sure that this is smooth so my vinyl will stick to this. Now, it won't stick to like stuff like this, but you just make do because this is wood, right? So now the edges, I'm going to go over the edges. I was trying to get this out earlier. I'm going to break my nail. Okay, so I just took that staple out that had the price on there. So I'm going to get my sander, and I'm basically just going to go from a little bit at an angle. I'm going to go right here, then I'm going to go right here. And then I'm going to go at the top and right here. And then I'm also going to go right here. Okay. Now you can use a belt sander for this. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So that's a different option before you piece together your signs. So turn it on. Um, glasses, mask, safety first, guys. Safety first. Don't, don't listen to me half the time. Safety. <laughs> by twos they're furring strips from um home depot so this sign is pretty much done um i go back through with my um hand sandpaper and i just get this little edges right here real quick i don't care about the back um no there's never been any complaints but you can sand the back if you want to so this one's done guys so you guys just watch me make a full sign here so this glue um, will need to dry if i throw this outside it's probably not going to come off it's not going to come apart when I um, throw it because how much wood glue we just put on it. So I'm going to show you how to use the belt sander. I'm going to get a piece of sh uh, scrap wood here. And I almost sanded my finger off one day. Let me see if it's on. Okay. So all I'm going to do... I have my piece here. So I'm going to basically sand. I'm going to kind of curl it here. We're going to sand that side. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to come back here. Um, sometimes I leave it right here. This one's already sanded. Um, you can sand these with the palm sander or hand sander too. Um, so it's your preference. So I asked the other day, what does everyone prefer? And it was kind of 50, 50, if they sand before the signs or before putting the signs up or not. So this is the belt sander. I did get at Harbor Freight. It's worked out just fine. I don't use it all the time, so it's no big deal. So we're going to turn the sucker on. Don't sand your hand off. getting splinters 
So some people um, like to sand their pieces first, then piece their wood pieces together. That's up to you. Um, let me kind of show you guys other options on signs that you could do. We've got some big mama jamas here. So I just got Home Depot to cut this out, a 12 by 12. And this sign is made to stand on its own. I don't actually have people hang this. So you see how thick this is. So that's already done. And then I come back through with my hand sander and I sand all this down, okay? Now you could do just simple plywood sheets. So this is a thin um, three ply, I don't really know the terms of it. One ply, I don't know, it's super thin. So super, super thin. And then I go back through and hand sand all this. And so I hand sand the sides here. Only with my planks and stuff, the shorter, um, the skinnier pieces of wood do I use the belt sander because it's a little bit harder to use the bigger pieces of wood there. Um, so does anybody have any questions while we're on here making signs? I'm trying to think what else. So um, you can buy the signs already made from Walmart or Hobby Lobby if you don't have all these tools because um, the tools do kind of get expensive. Um, or if you don't have space for it or whatever. Um, so there are options how you can um, cut out those signs. Uh, if you don't have a circular saw, which is this guy. So I use this on my table in the other room when I'm cutting big sheets of plywood. Um, you'll definitely need a bunch of, um, you need straight lines for that. <laughs> I love going to Harbor Freight. Everyone's always like, why are you going to Harbor Freight? Because there's always something there I pick up. How do you convince them? Because it's going to be cheaper in the long run to have your own tools, I'm telling you. So I've, I've always, there's always been a man there and they're like, no, I've always had a man or something. They're always like, no, 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 no. You don't need all these tools. I'm like, yes, I do. I really need these tools. So the second I became single this year, I have my own woodworking shop because I've used this. I've used these tools, especially the miter saw, so many times. I can cut all the wood signs I want because I'm a um, night crafter. So all those places aren't open in the middle of the night. So I really need, I needed something here that I could just cut and people, when they want custom orders, can I get a 16 and a half by 20 and a half sign? Yes, I can make that for you and I can do it tonight, you know? Yes, we're, I'm on the process of making some Halloween stuff too and Christmas stuff. I'm already doing Christmas stuff, guys. I bet your husband wants, <laughs> likes it when you want some tools. He's like, yes! Yes, definitely a knife crafter. So, um, I always say... It's, I don't buy the signs from Walmart and Home Depot or the Hobby Lobby, I'm sorry, the already pre-made signs because I know the quality that I put into my signs. Um, so I make sure that um, my signs are worth the quality and worth the money that I'm asking for when I finish these signs. So if I'm wanting $35 for a sign, I'm going to make sure it's $35 worth of quality in that sign. Um they are cheap quality at those stores and half the time they're not even real wood. So I'm just like, it's like a piece of paper. I don't even understand, but it works. So some people, some people use it. That's totally fine. I really, I want everyone to buy me tools for Christmas. My dad loves it that I'm into woodworking stuff now. Yeah, um, make sure when you go to Harbor Freight, they always have manager specials. So that's how I got that air compressor. Um, the air compressor was on a manager special because someone had it opened. Don't be afraid to do it. Just go out and do it. So I always say, try on error. <laughs> um, so basic tools to have when you're making a wood sign. Let's go over that. So if you are piecing together a wood sign, the basic things you'll need. Now, if you're cutting it yourself, okay? So if you're cutting it yourself, you're going to need um, measuring tape to measure it out. You're going to need a nifty little pen or a pencil, probably a pencil so you can erase your marks, which I never do. Um, you're going to need a miter saw. 
If you don't cut it out yourself, it's totally fine. Home Depot and Lowe's will cut it for you. So you go up there and say, I want this many cuts and this size and they'll do it for you. Now, some stores, they make you pay 25 cents after the first two cuts, okay? My stores don't do that. So um, just watch out for that and ask questions. Oh, that's awesome, Diane, that you work in a woodworking shop. That's pretty cool. <laughs> they have a digital tape measures. Yeah, we. Yeah, that would be definitely helpful because I'm always like, I'm blind. Like, I can't see. I don't wear glasses or contacts. So I'm always like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Um, so other things that you're going to need is um, some wood glue. So I get this, if I can turn it around. The Elmer's is just fine. There is a Gorilla wood glue that you can use. That's at like Home Depot or Lowe's. It's totally acceptable. You could use that too. That is industrial. Yes, definitely, Mary. Have someone help you with the tools for your first time. I don't want any of you guys coming back to me saying that your arm is cut off and now you can't glitter your cups, okay? So make sure you're using safety first, guys. Uh, so another thing is sandpaper. You can hand sand if you don't want to buy a palm sander or a belt sander, an orbital sander. You can hand sand. That's totally fine. Um, I choose to do the tools way um, just so I can get a lot of them knocked out quicker. Um, so we have the measuring tape, we have pencil or a pen, wood glue, a sander, a miter saw, a brad nailer, which is this nifty little thing. Then you're going to need the nails um, for this. This requires an air compressor. This is the air compressor hose that hooks up to my air compressor down there. Um, and I think that's about it for just making a sign. Now, obviously, finishing the sign, you're going to need a lot more stuff to that. So vinyl, paint, sealer, transfer tape, squeegee. So that's a whole other thing. All right. Does anyone have any other questions for me while I have you guys on here? All right. I'm going to go ahead and... Yes, I was borrowing tools, um, but I definitely have my own now. I really, really, really want a scroll saw or a band saw, and that makes my uh, wood cutting a little bit easier um, instead of holding the big machine that I used um, on a previous tutorial. So anyways, go ahead and drop some comments if you have any questions for later on. Um, you guys know I'm always around, so thank you guys for watching. I hope I helped somebody out. Y'all have a good night.